potential so it makes the electrons right make a contraction. Okay. So you got. So we have two different types of action potentials for cardiac cells. We have our nodal action potentials, and that means that they work at the SA and the AV node. And we also have our non-nodal action potentials. These work in the non-nodal cells, meaning your cardiac myocytes. And I'm going to write that down because that's an important concept. So they work in the cardiac myocytes as well as the cells that make up the Hispurkinji system. And cardiac action potentials share similar characteristics as action potentials in other parts of the body. So we have the rapid depolarization phase in both of these. We also have the rapid repolarization phase, and it repolarizes down into baseline. Okay, so with that, you have, like I said earlier, with your car. Your car has the potential of turning over and making it run in the potential phase. So this is our potential, right? And then it comes out and it goes down again, right? So when you're looking at your EKG monitor, you got a PR, a QRS, and a T, right? Your PR is your action potential. When we talk about dysrhythmias and you start seeing them on a monitor, this is normally what you're going to see. When we talk about your medications that we're gonna give, those medications interrupt part of this within the, the cardiac cell. The medications work in different parts of our bodies differently, but it's the action potential that makes this electrical impulse happen here in order to get a contraction and the pulse that you feel has to have all of this. Does that make sense? Yeah. When we're talking about non-nodal and nodal potential, okay? So if it's nodal, we're gonna block here in our nodes, or we're gonna block this part within the cell itself. So as we go moving forward, you got the cell, an extracellular, right? Mm -hmm. Your cardiac meds in a code that we use, I don't know what page it is, seven something, you got a table in there. And we're gonna go look at the table in there as well, right? Because you've got a potassium channel blocker, you got a sodium channel blocker, and you got a calcium channel blocker, right? Or you got a beta blocker. So a beta blocker blocks beta alpha or beta beta, right? right. They're cardiac specific or they're non-cardiac specific, right? Right. So we gotta know why we're using the drug that we're using in our cardiac rhythm. Does that make sense? Yeah. This makes sense with the potential like I was telling you down the hall. Okay, we're gonna listen a little bit more. I'm gonna stop this. And the change in voltage me, okay? is due to different ion channels being opened during different phases of the action potentials. So let's talk about the non-nodal action potential first. What's going on here? Well, we have phase zero. And phase zero is this rapid depolarization. And this is because we have an opening of sodium channels. So sodium channels open, sodium pours into the cell, and you get this rapid spike in voltage. At some point, these sodium channels close, potassium channels open. So as sodium no longer goes into the cell and as potassium now leaves the cell, we're gonna enter something called phase one, which again is mediated by potassium channels. And we're gonna get this slight dip in voltage, which brings us into phase two. And in phase two, we have calcium channels that open while the potassium channels are still open. So what's going on here? Calcium is entering the cell as potassium leaves the cell, and the charges sort of balance each other out. So therefore we get this plateau period where there's no change in voltage. Eventually, these calcium channels start closing, and you have a lot of open potassium channels, and this brings you to phase three, which is your repolarization phase. So phase three is this decline in voltage, and it's a repolarization phase caused by 
a lot of potassium channels being open, which brings us down to baseline, and that's phase four. Okay. And this is your resting member. Look at your cell up here, guys. Phase zero is your sodium channels open, right? So you've got your action potential. So your PR, your SA node has now fired. It's opening your sodium, your sodium's rushing into your cell. What happens to potassium when sodium comes in? It leaves, right? So think about this, think about sodium as the bully on the playground, right? Sodium comes in, hey, I'm the big guy, I'm here to take over, right? Potassium's the little guy that says, hey, I don't want any confrontation. Hey, you know, I'll just go quietly. I'll just slink out the back door, right? So potassium's coming out the back door. Sodium's coming in, potassium's coming out. Oh, now calcium says, hey, look, I can sneak in there and I can get a little bit of that action too, right? So the calcium starts coming in. So you got phase zero when sodium channel opens. You're in phase one when the potassium starts sneaking out the back door. You're in phase three when the calcium starts coming in. PR, QRS, now you're to your T. Now, sodium says, hey, I don't have anybody to bully. <laughs> I'm not touching calcium. You know, that, that's kind of like the seniors and I'm just a little freshman. I'm not, I'm not going there, right? Calcium's gone. So there's no more intimidation. So you go to phase four, where these guys are getting out of your cell and potassium says, escaped another one, I can come back in. Now we're at phase four. We are at total repolarization. This cell cannot be stimulated anymore. Your heart can't contract anymore because it's in phase four Phase four, which is complete repolarization. So you got an action potential in phase zero. It starts opening your ch sodium channels. Potassium says, hey, I'm not, I don't want to be here. I'm going to go away. It's phase two coming across. Phase three is when your calcium comes in. And when you hit phase four, you're, you're done. Can't take another stimulation. If you don't have another stimulation, you're at the end of diastole and you have a rest. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. In your phases and how your channels open and close. So when we start talking about medications, Hannah, you asked me last week about lidocaine. Lidocaine is potassium channel blocker, right? So if you give lidocaine, and this channel right here doesn't open. The potassium can't go anywhere. Can the sodium come in? No. Sodium can only come in and take so much space and so much or positive ion, and then it can't take anymore, right? Because once the, the channel opens, it goes from a high concentration to a low concentration, right? Once you hit max concentration, it can't go anywhere anymore. If potassium doesn't come out, it can't take any more in. If your calcium channel doesn't open because your potassium didn't come out, you've interrupted your dysrhythmia. Does that make sense to you now today? Okay, because lidocaine, you gotta understand why you're given the medication in this cycle of what you're gonna see here in your QRS and the phase that you're in as to why we give the medications we're giving. Does that help, guys? This makes sense from what she's telling you up here, what Lewis is telling you, and up here. A beta blocker works on our node, on our AV node, because it slows the impulses coming through. Right? So if our SA node is our pacemaker and it starts our impulse, it's going to start the whole thing because it starts in our SA, comes through our atrium to our AV node, 
Our AV node then starts down our bundle of hiss and it bifurcates, it splits, and it comes down to the apex of our heart and comes back up our Purkinje fibers. So our, our contraction starts at our atrium, starts in our ventricle, and comes up the, out the edges, right? If we have a sick coronary artery or coronary syndrome, so we have a misalignment in here somewhere, you have every one of these individual cardiac cells has the potential to fire. It doesn't have to come from our SA node and it doesn't have to come from our AV node because every individual cell has the potential to fire. The system works well, you young ladies are young and healthy, your nodes are all working, your heart's all working together. Poor Ruthie's 86, right? Her system is old and tired and it's not working well, right? Mm -hmm. So if she has AFib, AFib says her SA node is still firing, but you got a whole bunch of little cells like kindergartners in here to get excited, right? Think about the kindergartners when the teacher says, hey, we're gonna go outside and play on the playground. What do they all do? Whoop, hey, let's go, come on, come on, come on, come on, right? It's all a rush to get to the door, right? Because now we get, we get excited, we get to get up and move. We get to get the wiggles out, right? So your atrium then starts, your SA node's firing, but everybody else is firing too, right? So it gives you this. Right? And then your AV node is your gatekeeper. So you might have your QRS, but your T is lost because you got so many P's in it. Right? Mm -hmm. But your nodes aren't taken out, they're still firing. It's all these little guys that are all excited that you're seeing because they have action potential here, so they fire. Your AV node is like the teacher standing at the door and says, nope, nope, we're only going to go one at a time. I'm going to let you go out one at a time. You guys can all dance around and you all be excited, but you're only going to go out one at a time. <coughs> Make sense? So in this situation, we got a three to one block or a four to one block in AFib. It's regular. Your QRSs march out. They're regular rate and rhythm in your ventricle, in your QRSs. You have lots of P's, but they're not going through because your AV block is blocking them. If you're in flutter, if you're in flutter, which is your saw tube, right? It's going to be irregular because your AV node can no longer keep up. So maybe open the door and you let one through, maybe two skip through there, right? And then you just get to this, right? Because you get tired of being at time of it, right? <laughs> right? And pretty soon you just say, all right, just go, I'm done. Which leads you into the top. Because your ventricles have to have time to refill. They have to have time to rest so they can contract and you get good perfusion. Right? If your ventricles are trying to keep up with your atrium, what do you get? You get a non-effective, non-pulse, because it's not going anywhere. You still could have electrical impulse on your monitor, PEA, right? Pulseless electrical activity. So you might have activity, but I have no pulses, because my ventricle hasn't filled. Right? Has to fill in order to squeeze to get the blood to come out in order to fill a pulse. Does that make sense, guys? Mm -hmm. So if your SA and your AV are working well and you've got everything you need in your electrical and you have a potential and you've got your channels that open, you've got a sinus rhythm. But we get excited in there because every cell has a potential, but it has to be blocked to come down.
Does that make sense? Yeah. As to how this all works together. If you got a coronary syndrome or you got a myocardial infarction going on, that is your blood flow that is coming to your muscle not getting oxygenation to your muscle is causing ischemia and that muscle can't contract because now the muscle is damaged and it can't go anywhere. It, you still have the potential, you still have your AV nodes that are going, but now your muscle is sick. It can't work anymore, which then impedes your electrical, which will give you an AV or will give you a block somewhere in your system, which will show up on your EKGs, but not definitively unless you actually measure them out, okay? But phases, medications make sense, right? VTAC is your ventricles are trying to run faster they can run. How long can you run a sprint? <laughs> Can you run a marathon at a sprint pace? No. No. So we got to slow you down, right? right. We're going to give you amiodarone. Amiodarone is what? Where does it block? Uh, third phase, I think. Yeah. The it's in that the one cap table. Right here. Mm -hmm. Amniodarone is a calcium channel blocker, right? So if it blocks the calcium from going in here, calcium's not going to come in, sodium's going to concentrate in there, sodium's going to get tired and move back out so your potassium can come back in. So it's going to slow your rate. Right? Make sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. So we use different medications depending on what our rhythm is, what our rate is, because this is where it falls into our phases. Is that 10 minutes, Stace?